Today, I'm going to be talking about child abuse. As you may know, child abuse is a huge problem worldwide. So what exactly is child abuse? Well, child abuse is when a child gets physically, emotionally, or sexually harmed. The country for the highest rate for child abuse is South Africa. According to statistics recorded in 2009, one child gets raped every three minutes. Child abuse is not only apparent in the global south, but also in westernized countries such as right here in Canada and other areas of the global north, especially in deprived countries where many people live in very low income and many children have to work in very poor conditions to survive. In these countries, with child labor, children get abused both physically and mentally and are paid patient wages. Although, children getting abused at their workplace, especially in Asia and the Middle East, is very common. Last year, the World Health Organization published a report that stated, most child abuse incidents is involved with family members. Last year, I looked at a Sri Lankan website that showed me into the Sri Lankan National Child Protection Authorities. It said more than 3,000 3, child abuse incidents take place a year. Most of these incidents happen in the north and east parts of Sri Lanka, my home country. In South Asia, unemployment rates are extremely high. Therefore, it is common for the mothers to go to the Middle East to search for jobs. The children are often left alone with no protection for them. Many organizations have implemented child policies and procedures against child abuse. However, when looking at child abuse violence data, it has been increasing day by day and minute by minute. I am a 10-year girl speaking in front of you right now. And at this very moment, there are many young girls out there getting abused a single minute just because they're a girl or a boy. We need to stop child abuse and increase child protection, whether that be providing education for kids in deprived areas so they don't have to work in poor conditions and get abused or has stricter laws in among family members. We need to make people aware of these services out there for children who want to seek help or tell someone. For example, police officers, your classroom teacher, the child aid community, the child abuse association, and more. And for countries who don't have these services, we need to provide them immediately. Thank you. Thank you, Mahisa. That was a very heavy topic for you to take on at this age especially, but it was a very important one. And your passion really came through. You have researched this topic really well. You had a lot of great hand gestures. You made eye contact. Everything was very, very well done. But my only suggestion is to slow it down a little bit. We want to hear everything you have to say. But if you speed through all of those facts, we're not going to be able to catch everything. So slow it down, use some dramatic pauses, and it will make a big difference. But you did very well overall. Thank you. Hi. Today, I'll be talking about the importance of protecting the Earth. You know. I know. The importance of protecting the Earth. But nobody cares about it. Earth is the only planet we know of that has air and water and the right temperature to support life. All living things need air to survive. Animals, including humans, breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. So we should plant more plants and trees to replace those we use. When I was walking down the streets, I saw the city of Toronto planting trees. They are also protecting our earth too. Including me, I plant trees in my garden too. Why do I plant trees in my garden? So that more oxygen could come for the next generation. Also, we could care for the planet by the way we choose to travel. Cars, buses, and trucks burn fossil fuels that pollute the air with carbon emissions. For short trips, it is easy to walk or bike. These forms of exercises help keep us fit. Walking and biking are also good for the planet because they don't burn fossil fuels. I would like to say, Mostly, wherever I go with my mom, I walk. It is the truth, because my mom says it is good for my health. Some of you guys here are students. Choose the best way to get to your school. Number one, find out the distance. Number two, how long does the trip take? 
Number three, which way is good for your health? Number four, which way is bad for the planet? If you choose the best way, then you can protect our Earth. Next, I want to think about water. All living things depend on water. Save water when you brush your teeth. Leave the tap running while you brush your teeth for one minute. Collect this water in a dish tube and and then measure it in a jug. It should be three and a half gallons. Use this water to brush your teeth and to water plants. How many people live in the family? If they turn off the tap every time they brush their teeth, how much clean water will your household save? You think about it. Finally, I would like to talk about how we can protect our earth. Litter is dangerous and can be dirty to wildlife. I would like to share a little experience that I learned. This summer, me and my family went to many parks and beaches, but I experienced many problems. There were litter and garbage everywhere. People do barbecue, then they leave the litter all behind, which could go into Lake Ontario. And because of that, people and kids are drinking polluted water. In the future, we need to stop polluting the seas because they are killing and harming our underwater creatures. Thank you. Thank you for that speech. It was really good. It's a very important topic. Um, you clearly are excited about it. I thought you had good vocabulary in the speech that you're using, quite um, high level, which is great. Uh, you also sound like a strong advocate for it, especially towards the end, which is always good, kind of a personal punch. Um, some things to keep in mind. I think at the start more so than towards the end, you kind of always have a punch at the end of your sentence. So just watching, kind of change that up a bit, so that you pick the sentences that you really want to land with us. Um, I also loved that you would take pauses. I think when you were trying to just kind of regroup and figure out what comes next, I think that's a great strategy instead of using ums and ahs. So good job with that. Um, you've got good hand gestures and things like that, and you're looking at all of us the whole time. So good job. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and my name is Matush and Mati Sankar, and I'm here to talk about why smoking is bad. My grade, I'm going to grade four. Um, my, I have five reasons why, uh, and these five reasons are um, when you smoke, uh, it's basically littering the earth, and it's polluting, and it's spreading chemicals into the air, and that is... Um, actually hurting other people so you should smoke somewhere else and it's very not good to smoke because there it's called second hand smoking when when you're um, like beside each uh, beside people and you're smoking because when you're smoking you uh, have uh, a filter uh, in your hands and so you don't get that much chemicals and the other people that are beside you uh, get that get get sick more sick than you and they will um die or get lung cancer and lung cancer is really bad for your lungs and a cigarette contains um stuff like batteries poison uh toilet cleaner bug spray and s many more things and th this and uh, uh, I'm really sad for the people that uh, s that kill other people by smoking. So when you smoke, you should not really uh, spread uh, like stay where more people are or in the public. And when when you see signs about why uh, s like not to smoke in places like like where where people are, uh, you should not uh, break the law and. Uh, speak like the uh, smoke in front in front like uh, like close to people and this is my speech about um smoking and cancer and i hope you like it and have a good evening thank you that was a good speech um, make sure next time that you start with the clear introduction of what you're going to talk about and also include a clear conclusion. So sum up everything that you've talked about in a nice conclusion instead of stopping your speech abruptly, okay? So that was great in terms of your uh, voice. Try and change your tone of voice so that you're able to make it a little bit more powerful because it is an important topic. You also made sure to include some good tips and reminders for all of us, so that was very good as well. Thank you. Everybody.
Today, I'm going to talk about trees. My name is Bavisha Heron. Trees are the most precious gift to the humanity on the earth for which we must be grateful. Trees are very useful and beautiful source of nature. We should um, understand the importance of trees in our life and do our best to save trees in order to save life. Save environments on the earth and make earth greener. Trees are as valuable as gold. That's why they are called as green gold on earth. Trees are the real source of health as well as wealth because they give us oxygen, cool air, fruits, spices, vegetables, medicines, water, wood, furniture, fuel to burn, houses, and other useful things. Trees refresh air from toxic gases and prevent us from the air pollution. Trees are the source of rain on the earth as they attract clouds which ultimately brings rain. They also control noise pollution. They prevent soil erosion and floods. Trees protect us from severe weather. Trees are playing great role in the protection from pollution. More trees mean less pollution. We can live longer because trees remove pollution and deliver fresh air to our lungs. Trees are playing great role in food and medicines. Trees are the basis of healthy life. Trees are beautiful expression of nature. A green world is a safe world for all of life. We should stop cutting down trees and plant more trees. Trees are as much important to our life as food and water. Life becomes very difficult without trees. By seeing the importance of trees in our life, we should save trees and the environment on the earth. Thank you. Thank you, Babisha, for talking to us about trees. Trees are very important and we all love them, especially when we're younger, we can play on them and things like that. You did a very good job for your age to have spoken for so long. You had the whole thing memorized. And again, even if you took a moment to recollect your thoughts, you weren't saying any ums or likes, so that was very well done too. Just a little suggestion is instead of holding uh, your, the mic with both hands, try holding it with one hand and maybe have some hand gestures as well. Talk about how much you love trees, make it a little bit more engaging for the audience with your hands, okay? But you did a very good job. Thank you. <gasps> good evening, everybody. Today, I'm going to talk about good habits. Do you know what is habit? Habit is a routine of behavior that is repeated regularly. What is the importance of habits in our life? I'm telling you small rhymes. Rally to bed and rally to rise. Make the man healthy, wealthy, and wise. It means with our good habits, we can be healthy, wealthy, and wise. There are four kind of habits. <gasps> Spiritual, physical, educational, and social. There, um, Spiritual habits are <gasps> praying to God. Physical habits are <gasps> waking up early in the morning, 
doing physical exercise, brushing our teeth well, and taking a bath properly. These habits make us healthy and strong. Educational habits are going to school regularly, studying well, and listening our teacher. These habits make us educated. Social habits are obeying our parents, respecting our elders, being polite to everyone, and being happy. These habits make us disappointed. Habits form our future, so let us cultivate good habits. Thank you. Thank you. That was so good. You are so brave and so strong up there. You just you use loud volume. You're really commanding the stage, which is great. So brave. You made eye contact with everyone, even when you know you thought maybe you missed a line here and there. You were looking right at people, which is great. Um, I think you used a lot of great vocabulary too, a lot of big words, a lot of to really illustrate the points you were trying to make. Um, you can watch just about getting too loud sometimes. It, maybe not everything has to be the same amount of loud, but I, I love how clear you were because you were so loud too. So just great job up there. <laughs> My favorite writer, Maya Angelou said, you cannot use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. And yet, we still live in a time where most people think making a positive change in the world is a job for superheroes only. Imagine how different our world would be if leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., and Steve Jobs lack this attitude. Hello everyone, I'm Dia Deepak, and today I'm here to share my learnings on creativity, innovation, and how we can develop these skills. So, what is creativity? It's an act of turning new and imaginative ideas into reality. With creativity, we can innovate. And with both creativity and innovation, we create possibilities for the humankind. We humans have always been a creative and innovative species on Earth. Our evolution is a proof for it. However, in recent years, we hear a phenomena called Creativity Gap. A study by Dr. George Land reveals that we humans are naturally creative, but sadly, as we grow, we learn to be uncreative. The good news is, as a society, we can enhance our creative thinking by practicing three habits in our lifestyle. Firstly, it is being present. How often do we enjoy our dinner while watching a favorite TV program? The fast-paced life and intent of multitasking continue to challenge one state of being present. Being present allows our mind to see and question the mere existence of things, to discover something that will change the way we live forever. Secondly is iterative problem solving. In simple words, learning from failure. A child learning to walk is a great example of iterative problem solving. Children never quit trying after a fall because fear is unknown to a child. They iterate and try again until they learn to walk. But as the child grows, their brains are trained for fear, fear of failure. Contrarily, the willingness to fail is the first quality that creates space for creativity. Thirdly, creating white space. In other words, being bored time to time. We fill our time with TV, gaming, and other activities to avoid being bored. Boredom is not bad. It is a white space which allows us to think, reflect, and iterate. Boredom allows one to use their imaginations and inspires lateral thinking. To conclude, it is a very common myth that creativity stems only in gifted kids with very high IQ. But... It is proven that creativity is more of a skill than a gift. 
And more importantly, it is a skill that every parent and community can help their kids to develop as they grow to be better problem solvers to make this world a better place to live. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you, Dia. That was a very motivational and organized speech. That was very nice. Um, you also used quotes very well. You quoted studies as well as famous authors and writers, so that was great. Um, next time, try and use your body language and facial expressions a little bit more just to make it more pow powerful because it was a great topic, right? Um, and also try and include why you chose this topic because that would be very interesting as well. Thank you. Good evening, judges and friends. Today, I will be talking about lying and why lying isn't bad. My name is Varun Gandhi. Throughout my life, I've seen a lot of people lie. When we were this small, one of the first things we learned was not to lie. But let's be honest, we all lied. We all lie at some point in our lives. Whether it's saying the dog ate your homework, but you left it at home, or saying you're sick so you can skip school. The truth is, we're all liars. Nowadays, people are controlled by lies and stories. If you search up news on the internet, you see hundreds of results. Some of them tell lies, and some of them tell the truth. If you believe the lies, you're being controlled by that story and that author. For example, when I was small, my family said that if I didn't eat vegetables, I would get run over by a car. Crazy, right? And then there was my grandma, the biggest liar of all time. She said that if I didn't drink milk, I would get kidnapped. So I drank and drank and drank, lots of milk. I grew taller and taller, but never have I ever been kidnapped. But lying can also get you out of, you know, uncomfortable situations, especially if you're a kid. When you're a kid, you're forced to go to people's houses and eat whatever they make. And when you eat, it's the worst food ever. But you still have to say it tastes good, just so their feeling won't be hurt. Even adults use lying in their daily lives. How many times have parents faked the call or said they had work to do, just so they can skip a phone call? We do this to avoid people. But one thing to keep in mind when lying is that you have to lie in a way that it doesn't hurt the person's feelings. And these especially are called white lies. It's when you lie to a person, but the intention is not to hurt their feelings. And lastly, if you're a famous person, a celebrity, or just have a good reputation, lying can play a huge role in your lives. Nowadays, people post pictures of them standing next to things they don't own and wearing clothes they don't buy and post pictures. That's a smart idea, but what I'm against is, is that they lie. They say they own it, but they don't. And some people mess up, and it's a dead giveaway. An example would be one of my mom's friends. The person posted a picture of them sitting on a horse. We all thought the person owned the horse, until the boss commented on the picture and said, oh, he just works to feed the horse, I pay him. At the end of the day, I'm not encouraging you to lie. I'm saying that looking at it from a different perspective can change your opinion on lying. After all the situations that lying can get you out of from, if you still think lying is bad, I think you would be lying. Keep in mind, we're all liars. Thank you. Thank you, Varun, for that speech. Yes, you're right. We have all lied. That's the only truth I could tell you at this point. But in regards to your speech, I thought you had a lot of great anecdotes, a lot of which we could relate to, especially like grandma's lying, drinking the milk story. Oh, my God, I've heard that one. Um, so a lot of great things were in your content-wise in terms of your speech, really appeal to the emotions. You appeal to logic. You used a multiple... Uh, viewpoints, so you had a lot of various perspectives, and that made it a lot more interesting for us all. Um, just watch out for your mic placement, because sometimes you were coming in and out in terms of volume. But other than that, you did a really good job. You had great hand gestures. It was a good speech. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Jenny. I'm going to grade 8, and my topic is limited access to clean water.
Benjamin Franklin once said, when the well is dry, we know the worth the water. This powerful quote reminds us of the, reminds us of the, this powerful quote reminds, oh, I'm sorry. This powerful quote reminds us of the value of water, a key essence of human life. We are so lucky to be living in Canada because we have all the necessities we need. However, not all countries have these essentials. One of the most basic needs is water. Without it, we can't stay hydrated, which means we will die. In fact, about 844 million people are living without access to safe water. And 2.3 billion people are living without access to improved sanitation throughout the world. For us, it is very easy to access water. All we need to do is turn on the tap, and there you have it. Unfortunately, for people in developing nations, they have to walk miles, sometimes even for hours to get water, which makes them very tired. Can you imagine yourself doing that? Not only that, but they have to carry all the water back in heavy buckets for their families. Since there's only a certain amount of water, there might not be enough for everyone. I have four people in my family, including myself. If we had one full bucket of water, then each of us will only have a quarter of the water for the rest of the day. That is not enough for drinking. Did you know that a human needs about eight glasses of water every day? For, for instance, the number of people living in the sub-Saharan regions of Africa without improved sanitation has increased since 1990. There are approximately 1.1 billion people living there. This region is really poor but could also have a greater population in the future. This situation affects women and girls specifically in a really harsh way as well. They spend six hours each day getting water. This means girls don't have time for school, which is affecting their future. No one should have the chance of education taken away from them because of work considering that many girls can't attend school already. Also, women don't have time to take care of their families because most of the day is spent on receiving water. Additionally, the water that people are drinking in these places are not clean or safe either. This could lead to great consequences on their health. Every 90 seconds, a child dies because of diseased water. Can you imagine how hard it must be for people to lose someone due to a global issue? We must all be so thankful that we are not one of those people who are currently suffering because of this problem. Can you imagine living without all the clean water we have right now? Having access to water should be a right, not a privilege. So let's be smart and thoughtful. Let's use the water we have carefully. Thank you. Thank you, that was great. Um, I thought you made good eye contact. It's a very important topic. Um, you had some good examples, some good example calculations that we can kind of wrap our heads around the issue as well. Uh, good personal stories. Uh, I thought you could maybe just change up the tone and the pace a bit more just to kind of keep different parts standing out from other parts. They don't sort of blend together, but uh, you clearly know a lot about the topic and I thought it was a good job. Importance of water. Water is one of the most precious resources which is God gifted to us. We see water falling as rain, flowing in the river, staying in the lake, coming from tap. Did you know that 75% part of earth is covered with water? It is very cheap natural resources which is going to cost more than gold. Is it a joke? Not at all. 
is the future forecast. APJ Abul Kalam, former president of India, showed a presentation in which he has shown an eight-year-old child is looking as a 60-year-old because of water shortage and high temperature. He also pointed that many gunmen protecting and guarding water from general people. This prediction has been derived from water history and its present trends. So it is the right time to be careful about water future to secure the future of the globe. Just to add something, an average North American water usage on shower for 8.2 minutes, which is 17.2 gallons of water. That is a lot of water. Water fraction in our body is 60% by weight. Therefore, to keep us alive has 60% role. The biggest role of water is in the water cycle, which causes rain on Earth. Yeah, which causes rain on Earth. The rain water is the necessity for all living things. I think the government must bring a policy and law to economize the water waste recycling plant so that there will not be to dig well at the time of need. Okay. In a simple way, we can say that we have to save water. We have to, we, we have to save water. We have to... The time has come for engineers to take the responsibility for ensuring water future. I have a quote. Little water is a crisis. Huge water causes death, but sufficient water is life. Thank you for the speech. That was great. Um, your volume was very loud and powerful. Sometimes just try and watch it in terms of like the ending of a sentence. Try and keep it around the same volume throughout instead of going a little bit too high, right? Um, you used some great examples and detailed some great images um, through your description. So that was great and powerful as well. Um, you memorized the data that you used as well. So that was very impressive. Um, you also covered a lot of aspects of water usage, so not just importance for us, but the environment and elsewhere, so that was great. Um, next time, if you want, try and use cue cards with just your ideas in order so that you don't have to look at it all the time, but it can help you with finding out which spot you're at, okay? Great, thank you. My name is Ten Vanderen and I'm going to grade six. My topic will be about Ninja. Ninja is a professional Twitch streamer and gamer, also known as Tyler Blevins. Tyler grew up playing many games at where he was really good at playing Halo and now he is playing Fortnite full time. Ninja has been has been gaming and Twitch streaming as a job and his parents and his and his um, wife and siblings also support him. Ninja is inspiring to me because he teaches on how to get better at a game that you're not good at. He has played many games, but he's always m broken many records when playing Fortnite. One of his records is when he broke the um, subscriber record in, on Twitch with 10 million subscribers. He has also, he has also played with many celebrities such as Marshmallow and Drake. He has all he has won many tournaments in games and he recently won the E3 Fortnite Pro Am in America and he won 3 million dollars cash prize to jo donate to a charity. Ninja is a great role model and motivator because if you're a bad if you're bad at a game and you look watch Ninja you might learn a few or few things. Ninja is someone that I really admire because I've always wanted to be like him, but sometimes I get mad at him because he sometimes doesn't do what I like him to do. Ninja is a great motivator and role model. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your speech. I didn't realize there was so much to know about that. Um, it, you did a really good job in terms of your volume, your projection, everything was really good, 
but your hands were very stiffly at your side. You said this person inspires you, right? So you should probably reflect that in your tone, your hand gestures, and even your facial expressions. That way we can feel the passion and we would also be inspired by this person equally the same way as you are, okay? So bring your speech to life by doing these small things, but that was overall very well done. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sahana Sukhinton, going to grade 6, and I'll be talking about advertisements and its mind games. Are you tired of buying random things just because the ad told you so? Well, do you ever look at ads and think about all the mind games they use? Most of the times, different ads have different concepts. Why? Because of different target audiences. A target audience is a group of people who would most likely be wanting to buy the product. For example, if a toy truck was being sold, then the target audience would be children under 8. Well, there are lots of different types of products, which means there are a lot of target audiences. And lots of target audiences means there are a lot of methods. Do you ever look at a kid's cereal at it and think about the things they have in common? Well, they most of the times have an animated representative and bright color. This is used to draw on the child and make them pay attention. If you played the same ad in bright colors versus dark colors, the child would obviously pay attention to the one more eye-catching, which would be the one in bright colors. The representative usually sings a catchy beat to be able to, ca be, able to be caught into the ch child's mind purposely. That way, when they're going shopping with parents or family, they'll obviously be begging for the toy because they just can't get that beat out of their head. Methods used in these kinds of ads are humor to draw on the child and make them pay attention, warm and fuzzy images to catch them, catch their eyes, repetition when the same ad is played over and over in different TV shows, testimonial when a favorite person or role model is seen, or bribery when a toy is offered along with the product. It's a fast way to make money, and my little brother chasing after toys is a really good way to prove it. Like kids, adults can also fall into the hands of ads too. Either beautiful people saying, I use this product and now I'm as pretty as a dove. Or bribery offered with the product, such as a teapot being offered with a free packet of tea bags. Scientific evidence can also be used in most medicine and toothpaste. For example, four out of five doctors recommend this product. Plain folk or people like them also recommend the product too, so they don't feel too intimidated by the product. One of the most popular methods is bandwagon, which means everyone else is doing it, why not you? Some ads targeted to adults are also sad financial ads. The methods used in these are fear and hyperbole. Hyperbole is when the ad is stretched extra. Fear is often showed when if you don't pay for this, then your life is going to fall apart slowly and slowly. You're not going to realize it. Obviously, hyperbole is used there. And fear is in the whole sentence. This is goes to show that all of us can be tricked by ads. Sometimes it's funny to look at ads and think about the, the familiar methods they use. For example, in a beauty ad and a shopping mall ad, both would be having a bandwagon. For example, in the beauty ad, it would show a group of people using the makeup product. In the shopping mall ad, a group of people would be recommending the shopping mall. In a kid's cereal ad and a pet store ad, it's usually warm and fuzzy images and a jingle. The warm and fuzzy images is to drop, draw in the children who are watching the cereal ad. And in the pet store ads, there's usually animals involving in there. And the jingle is usually in there, so people will instantly realize the name of the products. This goes to show that advertisement has lots of tricks up its sleeve, but it's up to you to be smart enough to figure out what it is. Thank you.
This particular topic is so relevant to our society since we're bombarded with media images everywhere we go, whether we're just at home looking at our computer or we're actively watching TV or looking at commercials. Um, it is a very, very important topic. So you're right, we do need to be very smart about that. So your topic choice was very, very good. And I liked your vocabulary. It was well organized. You defined your terms, very advanced, like bandwagon and all of that stuff, hyperbole. These are really advanced vocabulary for your age range, and so that was very well done as well. Um, the only thing is, even if you have a mic in one hand and the cue cards in the other, still try to have some attempted hand gestures to engage the audience a bit more, because it does make a difference. So when you do a little bit of this, it makes us really kind of come into your speech a little bit more. So that was the only tip, but otherwise, you did a really good job. Okay, thank you. Did you know that humans are the main source of animal endangerment? In fact, urbanization is the main cause for this. Urbanization is the act of changing a location to hold more characteristics of a city. For example, adding more buildings and factories is a part of urbanization process, also seen as human development. Human development, something we all crave, to expand the way we live, allowing us to indulge ourselves into new possibilities. We tend to blindly build new houses and new buildings wherever space is available, without even considering how we would affect the wildlife. Not only am I speaking about this topic on a national spectrum, but on a global scale. For example, in the Amazon rainforest in South America, developers have cleared thousands of acres consisting trees and other vegetations. Not only did this affect the trees and plants, it affected thousands of other species as well. All of the insects and animals depended on those plants to provide them food, water, shelter, and other necessities. All of the dependent species were forced to move out of their home and find a new place to live. Although this may seem like a simple procedure, adaptation is a very difficult process. Not all animals can survive the severe heat or extreme cold weather, nor wet habitat or dry environment. Each living thing has a specific attribute it needs in order to survive, and it's not uncommon for a species to be unable to adapt and simply die out altogether. Imagine having the one thing you hold most precious, the thing you value more than anything else is then suddenly ripped away from you in the blink of an eye. That's what these animals have to go through constantly because of human development. Instead of destroying and ruining the wildlife in our community, we should be trying to savor, embrace, and cherish the nature and all the living things around us. The smallest thing and the smallest deed can make the biggest difference from planting a tree to simply educating others about the matter at hand. We can all pitch in and aid the nature around us. Although, aesthetically, the stone fountains and the granite statues hold great beauty and elegance at first sight, the natural green space is far more valuable and so much more entrancing, as the beauty is not materialistic, but pure. As Martin Luther once said, for in the true nature of things, if we rightly consider, every green tree is far more glorious than if it were made of gold and silver. This is what we should all consider to our day-to-day -day lives, and I hope we all do. Thank you. That was really well done. I thought you were very clear. You seemed very into the topic. It's a very important topic. Um, I loved how even though you had cue cards, you're still using your arms. Um, and actually, sometimes I think pacing maybe is distracting, but actually it was really effective for you. I feel like you were talking to people, you're looking at people as you would kind of go back and forth there. You can also think about maybe pausing every once in a while, every time you want to say something important, like actually stop moving for a moment, but that's okay. Um, I thought you made good eye contact. I thought you had some really good examples and you'd really pause every time you'd say, for example, and then you'd list things. So I thought that kind of pacing was really well done. So I thought it was an awesome job.